one of the largest Pokemon tournaments ever to happen, indeed the largest VGC tournament, the Champions Cup, happened over the weekend, and I chose to take part, so I thought I'd go over my experience in this tournament. The team that I bring to the tournament had a simple plan, sleep them with Butterfree, set up a Pokemon, and sweep. I liked my five Pokemon, Sylveon was a last minute addition because I wasn't sure what to do with that slot. Okay, into the first game. Played against Mitch for the first time, and sad to say, this was my worst game I've ever played a Pokemon, I think. I made every mistake possible. Turn 1, I set up with Blastoise and used Sleep Powder into the Safety Goggles, which lets them get a free Trick Room up after the Follow Me. But it gets worse for me. I decide to use two attacks, not thinking that Trick Room will kill me in one hit, but it does, which means I get off a lowly Pollen Puff with my Butterfree, which does essentially no damage for my efforts. I send out Sylveon, hoping it can maybe do something, but it dies in the same round after a single Hyper Voice, which doesn't do nearly enough damage. And Butterfree is being a bit useless again. I use Sleep Powder, and don't know that Hatterini has Magic Bounce as an ability, and send myself to sleep. I, I, I truly have not felt so stupid in a while. But it gets worse. I try and Dynamax my Mimikyu and misclick, backing out and doing a regular attack, meaning I don't have enough HP to survive. I try a Shadow Sneak, it doesn't work because Psychic Terrain's up, stopping the priority move. As a last ditch attempt, I Dynamax my last Pokemon, Butterfree, and hope maybe I can get a double sleep or a double paralysis, and that might be enough to stall out the game. In theory, double paralysis could just win but I don't get it, so of course I lose. I've just got destroyed, so I need to change up my strategy hard in order to win this. The Butterfree isn't doing anything. I decide to go with Incineroar Mimikyu to start up, and this is a start that I've never done before, but you know, when best to try things than in the moment, I guess. It works out okay for me. They switch out to Hyperior turn one after the same start. Why wouldn't they do the same start? After it went so well last time, of course. I decide to Sword Stance with Mimikyu to get ready to Dynamax it, so Sword Stance can hopefully kill something in one hit and just try and Darkest Lariat this Indeedy out of here first. But they switch out to Hyperia, which turns out to be really good for me, because I managed to get a decent chunk of damage on it, which after Dynamaxing is enough to up kill it. And then I learnt a brand new mechanic. Turns out, use Parting Shot on a Pokemon with Magic Bounce, you lose the stats and force them to switch out. I had no idea this was going to happen, so it shocked me, and then I had to switch out Incineroar next turn, but I wasn't doing too bad. The Indeedy that comes in, I kill with one hit with Max Starfall, the Vika Ball, gets a good counter attack, but not enough to kill me, thanks to the parting shot from Incineroar. And that means the combination of that attack plus my Hyper Voice kills it. They get Trick Room up, but it's too late. I actually managed to get the 4-0 in this game. Now comes the hard part. We're in the final game of the series, and I decide that they're going to mix things up after getting 4 by my new tactic. Little did I know they go for the same start, and so do I. So I'm already worried from the get-go. But I have a plan. There's one thing I regretted to do last time. I didn't use my Rage Powder on my Butterfree. So the start is exactly the same, but at the pivotal moment when they Dynamax, I Rage Powder, which absorbs the hit and means my Blastoise doesn't die, instead it gets a good amount of damage off. And then again, next turn, Rage Powder saves me from dying. I send out Mimikyu hoping to get the kill as soon as possible, no sword stance this time, and I should have max guarded here because now they actually got the Confuse on me, which was scaring me every round for the rest of the game. But the Max Starfall is enough to get the Vika Vault in range of an Incineroar kill the next turn. Which puts me in a pretty good position. I can kill the Hatterini with a Max move again. Uh, I have to worry about the confusion every single turn of the game though. They send out Rhyperia, and again, I'm like, please don't die to confusion, because I will lose. But I manage to get through just. They Earthquake, take out the Incineroar, almost take out the Mimikyu, but I have just enough damage to get in there and kill the Rhyperia with both their attacks and another one next turn from Mimikyu. Okay, so we had a good start. It goes to show, even if you do as worse as possible in your first game, we still won the other two games. This is actually my first time playing a best of three format, so it was all new to me. Game two. So I decided to go for my standard start again of either Blastoise or Incineroar and Butterfree. This time we go Blastoise, seeing that they have these Pokemon on their team. We expected the Gudra first. That Sap Zipper makes it immune to my Butterfree, which is always very annoying. So we're going to Sleep Powder the Torkoal instead, and we're going to set up with our Blastoise. Not sure this was the best move in hindsight, because we don't really have a way to deal with the Gudra right now. But we do have Dragon Pulse on the Blastoise, but I don't think it's going to do that much, considering Gudra's ungodly special defense. Gudra brings down the Sash on our Butterfree, which is fine, that's what it's meant to do. And we Rage Powder of our Butterfree, remembering that we can do that this time. Uh, and we get the kill on the Torko, which means the Sleep Powder really didn't do a whole lot, but it does literally nothing to the Gudra, which is unfortunate, because now he's just going to get another kill on us. Sharon comes out and we bring in the Mimikyu over our deceased Butterfree and try and get a good hit in with it. We know that Mimikyu does a ton of damage to this Gudra. Blastoise doesn't do enough. I'm not sure if it's going to kill, so I just put it in there just in case. 
Pedal Blizzard pops my disguise, which is annoying, but then Mimikyu manages to take a kill from Gudra. My shot comes in and uses Protect immediately, which protects it from the Pedal Dance and also stops us from killing it with our Mimikyu. Now, the next turn's really bad for us. We use our Air Slash, it doesn't kill it, I expected it to. We use our Max Starfall, it doesn't kill the Bite Shot. When you think you're going to get two kills and have a nice easy turn and then they both get to attack back, things don't tend to go well. They use Helping Hand and Sucker Punch to Revenge Kill our Mimikyu. We could have played around this, we could have played around this with our own priority move, we got enough Sword Dances off, we didn't know they had it at the time. Next game, we bring out Mimikyu and Incineroar this time for a complete change of pace. They recognise that Gudra is going to die to my Mimikyu, so they switch out and I Dynamax anyway, just to make sure because it's a big problem for my team in the last game. Sharon comes out, we don't mind getting some damage into that. As it happens, Mimikyu attacks and actually breaks the focus sack. Then Incineroar's fake out, flinches the Torkoal, which isn't the best use of our Dynamax, but it's an okay turn one. Next turn, we manage to use Manx Phantasm on the Torkoal, and this doesn't actually kill it, because I didn't realise how much defence Torkoal had, but we do take out the little cherry guy. Next turn, they bring in Bishop and use Max Guard, which I was so happy with. I wasn't going for that anyway, I decided to take out the Torkoal, so we got a free turn there. Then they bring in Gudra, which we get to play rough with. Mimikyu is just wrecking face this game. They decide to kill my Incineroar and then my Blast Swords when it switches in, but Mimikyu is still going strong, which, by using my Sword Stance so he can't suck a punch me, allows Togekiss to get the kill in the second game. Game 3 we start with Incineroar and Blastoise. It unfortunately triggers the Defiant and the Bite Shot, which makes it a threat immediately, so of course it then Dynamaxes. And to make matters worse, we kind of don't realise this and fake out the Bite Shot, which is not a good start to our game. And to make matters worse, we use Water Spout to kill the Torkoal that they switch out of, so this was a terrible position to be in after turn one. We Dynamax of our own Incineroar and switch out to Togekiss, which unfortunately dies to the Max Steel Spike. And unfortunately, Incineroar doesn't even kill the Bite Shard, so we're a bit struggling now. But they decide to go for Max Guard on the Bite Shard instead of using the last turn of Dynamax, which lets us set up Sword Stance on our Mimikyu and kill this Cherin with our Incineroar, which is what we were going to do anyway. So this was a huge boon that I wasn't expecting to get this game. As a result, now that we've got the Sword Stance boost, we can actually use Shadow Sneak to kill the Bishar, which wouldn't be enough normally. We then get to use our Max Darkness attack to kill the Gudra, mostly. Although it might need a little help next turn from a Shadow Claw. Ah, but then this Torkoal comes, and I was feeling kind of okay at this point. But sadly, Torkoal actually managed to sweep us here, because Mimikyu's pretty low. It uses its Earth Power to kill our Mimikyu, and we only had two physical attacks, which is bad against the Torkoal, I've now learned. So we did lose the second one. Round 3 starts and we have this connection issues uh, luckily before the game starts and we can't actually get in. But eventually we do. Now, we're up against an Arcanine, so I decided to make a super hard read. Whenever I've played against these before with a Togekiss Butterfree lead, they tend to go for a Dynamax Electric move, get the Electric Terrain up and stop me sleep powdering. So I go straight for the Grassy Terrain for my Solar Beam. Um, as it turns out, it doesn't really end very well as they don't Dynamax instead after a Protect. So we basically waste this whole Dynamax. So sometimes you have to make big plays to win games, but I went a little bit far. This might be better to do in game two, for example. In fact, the grassy terrain really hurt me because it healed up the damage they were taking. So this was a terrible play. We do manage to get the Arcanine to sleep and then with a critical hit, almost kill it with our max airstream. But this uh, this Kongmaro is gonna be a fall in my side as I try to use a sleep powder on it and it has safety goggles, as it's gonna be relevant throughout basically the whole match. They managed to wake up after one turn and get my Butterfree down to its Sash, which is quite unfortunate as well, and lets them kill Butterfree. And then I Dynamax into Komoro again, but it protects again. So really, my Dynamax was useless this game, which isn't super good. Now here I use Hyper Voice and Arcanine dies. Next they bring out Lapras and Dynamax. I try and flinch it, but obviously that doesn't go very well, so they get a free setup of Aurora Veil, which basically spells the end of the game to me, because I don't really have a super good way to pierce through that. I send in Mimikyu and try and get a Swords Dance off to balance the Aurora Veil boost, but it doesn't really end up doing much. And eventually, I learn what Komoro's ability is, that you can't use sound moves on it, which makes Sylveon a horrible matchup, as I can't actually damage this thing. So, I lose game one quite succinctly. Game two, we go for the same start, but they go for a completely different setup, two water Pokemon. They predict my sleep pad on the Lapras, because I really don't want it to get the Dynamax move off turn one, Me and I run into the safety goggles. I do manage to get the flinch on the Primaria, though, so the first turn isn't so bad here. As it happens, they switch out to Arcanine, and I take this opportunity to want this Como O out of here. This turn I decide to Dynamax and go Max Airstream into the Como O. It protects, but we get some good damage on it, up our speed, which lets us set the Arcanine to sleep before it gets to make any actions. Next turn, again, we shoot another Max Airstream to take this Komoro out, which means everything on their team can be put to sleep, which is a big hindrance off our backs. 
Lapras comes out and Dynamaxes into our max guard, which is really bad for us, as we shoot both Sleep Powder and an attack into it, our max overgrowth, which lets that Arcanine wake up and use a Flare Blitz to take out the Butterfree, which, now that we have no sleep, dealing with this Aurora Veil that he set up again is really tough. In fact, our Togekiss dies on the next turn, and we're just stuck with Blastoise and Mimikyu, and you'll see this Water Spout. I want to get the damage on the Arcanine. Clearly it heals the Lapras, which maybe wasn't the best move, but it doesn't even deal that much to the Arcanine either. I, I expected it to kill. Lapras pops through the skies on my Mimikyu, and then next turn they use Protect. I shoot Dragon Pulse into the Arcanine as it protects, and then I use Shadow Claw on the Lapras, which does a decent amount of damage, but not really enough. They decide to use Freeze Dry on my Blastoise, which is of course super effective, and manages to take it out. At this point I'm just left with Mimikyu, which doesn't give me a super great chance. I go for the Shadow Claw to try and take out the Arcanine, which I do, but the Lapras is going to be enough to take out Mimikyu. But the Lapras is going to be enough to take out Mimikyu, because I have a Life Orb, so even though I can take out the Primaria next turn, my Life Orb finishes me off. And that's it for part 1. I went 1-2 in my first three games, which wasn't super motivating at that point, but 7-2 could still get in there or make a prize, so I was still going to go hard at it, and you know what? As my first tournament, I was happy to just get the experience. The good news is, it does go up from here, so I'm going to split this video into three parts. If you like the format of it, please let me know, because I wasn't sure. Fitting eight games of Pokemon into ten minutes was a bit hard to edit, so I hope everything was clear. Let me know if you'd like to see part two and three and etc. Or I also do a lot of other Pokemon content, some of it helpful, some of it funny, some of it experimenting. So if you want to see what I'm doing, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. Uh, and, you know, do whatever whatever makes YouTube happy, I don't know. And also, I would like to give a big thank you to my Patreons, Danny and Lucas, for their continued support in making these videos possible, especially as production's picking up a bit at the moment. Thanks for keeping on going. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. I've got the next video that's already recorded. I just need to narrate and edit it. So let me know what you thought, and we'll see you in the next one.